Hey, I just want to say congratulations. What you are doing is awesome and amazing. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's so fantastic, just the work that you've been doing. And uh, my students are all in love with you. Okay. You should know okay. this. Okay, thank you. They are just all in awe. And they're all in awe. And yeah, they are, they are all in awe. You really are, you're doing something really special. It's really interesting. Wow, it's something to, to wake up to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, am I, how is it, how are you, how is it going and how are you doing? Are you, are you exhausted? Are you okay? Not at all, not at you... all. Yeah, I had, last I checked, uh, more than eight hours of sleep, so not at all exhausted. <laughs> um, pre-caffeinated though. Uh, anyway, um, a Starbucks coffee is arriving any minute now. <clears throat> I may have to fetch it. Uh, and... <laughs> And in any case, I'm doing well. Um, just turned forty, uh, and like literally yesterday. Uh, and um, yeah, wow! I, I, Happy birthday! Thank you. Um, and uh, um, still not traveling, but I anticipate starting to travel around. I don't know September, October. Um, and uh, the the work currently, the counter infodemic and counter pandemic work, um, has been largely um, automating itself. <laughs> so I'm not actively uh, working on these two topics. Uh, I'm now uh, tackling more traditional digital service stuff. Uh, and oh, yeah, uh, and there's a upcoming digital ministry, a dedicated competent authority for digital affairs, um, starting. I don't know, probably uh, early next year. Uh, and so there's also a lot of reorganization to do uh, internally because currently my office is a continent from 12 different ministries, uh, which is great. Uh, it's a yep. horizontal leadership style. Uh, however, uh, in terms of, say, cybersecurity uh, and other more um, vertical uh, issues, uh, there still is a need uh, to get the required, uh, for example, the, the recruitment from outside experts to get their salaries up to par and so on. We, we fix pretty much the procurement parts, um, but uh, uh, link to local government as well as the hiring part, that's something that we've been focusing on for this year. So that's a short update. Interesting. So you really, it's kind of almost more of a talent mm -hmm. play, where it's how can we ensure, how can we get the right talent into the, sorry, the service delivery side and thinking about kind of um, government service delivery and how government organizes, that's like, I'm like less cybersecurity, mm -hmm. less disinformation. That's like what I think about a lot. So it's really exciting to hear that you're moving in that mm -hmm, direction. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, mm -hmm. um, and is there, what about um, unique identifiers, national IDs, mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. services, mm -hmm. microservices? We, we've we've, we've got a national ID. Um, we've got two national IDs actually, three if you count a passport. Uh, and uh, right, and uh, we just wrote out uh, a general beta of the national health IDs uh, app-based system, so that instead of uh, a IC card, uh, you can also opt in uh, to a QR code, uh, a TOT pay uh, on the phone. And uh, um, app, the Anshai app, uh, has been downloaded. I don't know, ten million, more than ten million, I think twelve million now. So half of population now uses the app, which doubles as a you know my data. Um, authorization tool, a data collision tool, and, and things like that. And so, yeah, it's been really, really good because uh, pre prior to the pandemic, uh, there was almost no downloads. I think it was at half a million or something. But now it's been, you know, the top download in both App Store and Google Play for the past year. Uh, and so that part worked really well. And is there is there a, uh, is there a sense of building some kind of common infrastructure across, like, vertically across the government? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. The, the My Data platform uh, is generally available now, so people can, uh, with a single click, uh, link through multiple uh, data silo and download uh, their own data and then authorize it for a third party uh, data collaborative uh, processing and so on. That that the usual oh, thing has been done. Uh, but by usual, I mean by, you know, um, uh, Estonian or uh, Scandinavian standards, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, and and uh, nowadays um, we're moving on to the statistics side, right? That because the the my data, the personal authorization side has been done, um, and so the uh, aggregation side uh, we've 
just successfully did a pilot on homomorphic encryption, and we're going to use that quite pervasively uh, to decouple cloud computation uh, with uh, data storage because um, we, we need to interpret such that homomorphic encryption counts as on-site computing. Uh, and there's also federated learning, uh, ACAS, split learning, uh, and many other uh, exciting zero-knowledge stuff from the uh, blockchain space uh, that we're also looking into to uh, basically enable uh, integration without compromising privacy. Um, so many questions. Can I keep uh, going? Course, so go many ahead. questions. Um, with the with the kind of my mm -hmm. my data, is that is that leveraging the expert? Like, did you build did you build from scratch? Is this a legacy system that's been around that you've kind of built on top of, or did you? Did you pull code from somebody else? Mm -hmm. I'm curious about that. Yeah, uh, although the underlying code we call it X. Uh, sorry, T road. We didn't use X road. <laughs> it's more of a, you know, um, yeah, tip of a hat than, than anything else. But <laughs> yeah, we call it T road. I, I guess T for Taiwan. Uh, but uh, the, the the point here is that while the system architecture uh, is um, of course X road inspired, um, we we this is all like built upon existing government service network uh, infrastructure, the GSN code. Uh, and uh, the GSN code has been powering the EDI, the Electronic Document Inter uh, Interface anyway, uh, but uh, it previously haven't been uh, G2C. It previously has been exclusively G2G. So we're basically uh, having the National Development Council as a G2G um, peer, but with the special mandate that uh, it need to be translated into the outside. Uh, so policy authorization so that when you open a bank account, for example, you can get your uh, relevant uh, Minister of Interior, Minister of um, Economy, Minister of Finance uh, records uh, through the NDC instead of um, getting it from the three peers individually. Um, and so, yeah, it's been uh, a very conservative um, like extension. It's not like we, we scratch out any existing code, but it does pave the way to future, for example, G2B applications, uh, which if you're a small business owner, theoretically, that will enable uh, you to um, basically subscribe to, to one single website, and then uh, the government tells you, uh, much like how, I don't know, Recollect tells you how to, <laughs> you know, when they when to bring your uh, trash out uh, to, to file your, uh, like, environmental declarations, you know, carbon accounting and, and all things like that, because these some of these were, were uh, newly introduced, so people were not very much used to uh, how to file, when to file and so on uh, anyway uh, and so having a single um, B2G uh, portal uh, I think that will help a lot and we've got quite a few experience already building the text filing system which has been uh, API first so uh, by changing a few parameters it became the mask pre-ordering system and then becoming uh, the stimulus voucher uh, purchasing system so uh, we're going to use the same architecture that we did for the text filing um, also for the uh, mountaineering, hiking um, application, also for the ocean, the Taiwan, the GOV, the TW, the ocean affairs uh, single portal, uh, we're going to use that uh, for the B2G portal as well, and that's for the next year. And so um, the, the one of the points here is that because it's all open API based, as in the Linux Foundation standard, uh, all the third party developers, apps, um, startups, and so on, are all free to just see our implementation as reference implementation and do whatever they want. Uh, again, that's a standard play. Very yeah. cool. Very, very cool. Um, you mentioned the blockchain. I've been kind of skeptical mm -hmm. and would actually think I'm, I'm surprised to hear you express some enthusiasm because I guess my concern is that if you have a distributed ledger, you're really losing control and, you know, one could, you know, you kind of invited a governance nightmare in case you need to roll anything back or mm -hmm. make a change, mm -hmm. and or you expose yourself to attack from a mm -hmm. a, a, a an attacker or with a lot of percent takeover. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then um, and then if you and if you're just using a permissioned mm -hmm. ledger, like I kind of sometimes I kind of go like, what's the mm -hmm. point? But do you have a different take I on do. this? I, you know, I obviously do. a huge amount of respect. Do. So um, so. 
Uh, well, I mentioned uh, zero knowledge uh, and so on. I, I refer to it as blockchain inspired, uh, which means that, for example, um, the national health insurance still is the single source of truth. Uh, but say uh, you are hosting a marathon and you want to ensure that the participants do not, you know, drop dead during running. So you uh, invent, uh, sorry, uh, um, publish uh, uh, certain ranges of acceptable uh, health uh, values uh, in terms of measurements. Uh, so that only people in the healthy range. Uh, now, the problem with the my data uh, as currently implemented is that while you're not a doctor or nurse, you will end up getting access uh, if you use the my data authorization, uh, getting access to a lot of quite sensitive health records that's way beyond, um, because the the marathon is supposed to be a kind of self self assessment. Uh, so the scenario is not about the organizer actually uh, doing anything with your health records uh, in in fine detail. So theoretically, all the my data portal should do uh, is just to output a series of yes, no, yes, no, yes, no uh, questions, or even just a single yes or no question as of whether it passes the criteria or not. But currently, the my data portal only copies the data. It, it doesn't really uh, looks into the data. Uh, and so uh, currently, the MyData platform cannot check the range for you. Um, and so enter zero knowledge range proof. Uh, so the idea is that the ZKRP is signed by the NHI itself rather than the MyData portal. Uh, and so the MyData portal is just one of the many witnesses uh, of the ZKRP. Um, and so as the organizer, I only check the signature is done by the Na National Health Insurance uh, Agency that the diagnosis, uh, the previous records uh, are within the range and I learn nothing else. Right, which is why it's called zero knowledge. Um, so, um, I mean, you can implement this um, in any of the uh, PKI-oriented ways uh, with, uh, with, with, well, any amount of red tape. Uh, but uh, the ZKRP is a um, emerging, I wouldn't say standard, but emerging way to do distributed signing uh, that people seem to to like. Um, and so it's basically uh, just you know back office automation uh, with a cooler name. Uh, but we're not using a ledger for that. <laughs> Although we are using Ethereum compatible uh, ZKRP, um, you know, signing mechanism, just because the, the code has been reviewed and it probably doesn't have much cybersecurity concerns. Otherwise, a lot of people will earn a lot of money. So we, we, we trusted the code more, I guess, because it's vetted. <laughs> but but we're, we're not actually running uh, a public ledger or a permissioned ledger for that. We're just reusing pieces of the Ethereum um, invented technologies. Uh, the same goes for quadratic voting in the presidential hackathon. Again, we could have run it on a public lecture, but we don't. Uh, but we reuse pretty much the same design. Interesting. Um, just as a brief aside, we exited Recollect two weeks mm -hmm. ago. Yeah, um, I, I saw that. You should, I saw uh, that. Congratulations. You see, oh, that's great. Uh, Thank you so much. Um, uh, I, um, yeah, Luke and Kevin and I are very excited. So uh, we'll, we'll send you another mm -hmm. note. Um, but we're, you were really excited. Um, um, I'd love to switch gears to ask you about, um, I have a research project with the Rockefeller mm -hmm. Foundation to look at the governance of uh, shared code between mm -hmm. governments. So you're probably familiar with the Nordic Institute for Interoperability Standards, yes. which is mm -hmm. uh, So that's kind of a one model of, so I'm not interested in how governments might consume, say like Apache, like the Apache, mm -hmm. like, you know, because they're just like they're just a consumer. Mm -hmm. I'm interested when governments are co-owners mm -hmm. and participating in the governance mm -hmm. of the code That's base right. itself. Mm -hmm. Are you engaged in anything like that? Yeah. Or does anything come certainly, to mind in your certainly. work? Uh, Polis is, of course, uh, the flagship. Right. We uh, are involved heavily uh, during the. Uh, you know, the rewriting for the mobile uh, version. Uh, we uh, are quite instrumental. Of course, Colin makes the final decision of uh, it's going to a GPL rather than uh, being proprietary. Uh, and we contributed quite a lot of localization code. We hired penetration testers, uh, making sure that it's cybersecurity um, safe and easily 
self-hostable um, and along with the Canadian government we did a, a first deployment uh, of the automatic bilingual translations and things like that the list goes on so so yeah polis is certainly like that uh, to a slightly lesser extent also sandstorm but sandstorm is special because uh, the the company that runs it has been dissolved right Kenton is now in in uh, Cloudflare uh, and um, so we had to basically take care of the governance uh, of the individual Piece of Sandstorm that we use it. So it extends beyond cybersecurity, but also because Sandstorm is a container, we also just um, reuse whatever civic tech. So that's very interesting because we, we don't have this idea that within Sandstorm it's called GovTech because uh, line by line uh, the code is the same. So if people like uh, HackMD, then we package it, the open source part of it, uh, up into the Sandstorm uh, Code EMZ Markdown Collaborative Editor. Of course, either Calc maintained by yours truly, of course, is part of Sandstorm, uh, and many other things uh, that transfers this way as well. But we don't control upstream, but we do need to take care of the you know, usability, the, the service um, delivery, uh, front end uh, localization, and things like that of the pieces from Civic Tech that we also use as the GovTech, but we always contribute back. So I think that's a pretty good um, pretty good format because uh, the cybersecurity team in Taiwan, um, like DevCore, which just uh, won, I think, one of the um, Pong to own, I think, uh, and they said that Sandstorm is very, very secure after flying three CVEs. So any less secure civic tech by packaging it into Sandstorm is automatically more secure. And so, so your major contributors to the project mm -hmm. What about the governance? Like, do you have control over the roadmap mm -hmm. or future? Fe like, mm -hmm. how, what's that look like? And and yeah, d do you influence it? Do you think about that? Do you want more control mm -hmm. or? or is there a committee? Talk to me a little bit about that. My um, my position is always that we we fork first and right? merge later, but we develop in the open. So so we're just like any other downstream vendor. Interesting. Yeah, we're, we're not unlike Debbie so and Red Hat. Oh, interesting. So you're so you're participating in these, but you're like kind of forking, building out your own, and then making the case back. So you're you're not actually directly involved in the governance of the pro, of the core project per se. You're more like outsider influencers are kind of like throwing in your ideas, very, very well articulated and like and well worked ideas, and saying, hey. Mm -hmm. We really think you should adopt this, and, mm -hmm. and they're kind of. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And when the upstream needs um, a, a more timely help in terms of cybersecurity uh, related pull requests, of course, that's um, that needs to be timely. Uh, then we do have the developers uh, to help them out, but we're not controlling the governance. We're merely saying that oh, your users are at risk. And and is there any desire to have more influence on the governance, like mm -hmm. for polis or anything like that? Is like, would you would you want to have a say well by by maintaining or, or and operating successful forks uh, that automatically give you a say uh actually more of a say than any board of committees or whatever right so, that that's the thing i believe in and um, i guess it's also blockchain inspired <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I that's this is super fascinating it it does it really it's kind of influenced through capacity mm -hmm. so it, not all governments necessarily have this level of capacity that, that you have. And so mm. they may they may resort. Oh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say so because if you are, even if you are merely a user, uh, like deploying Apache or Nginx or, or whatever, uh, almost by definition, you, you had a, the capacity. The, the issue is just the, the current hierarchy or bureaucracy, whether it operates in a way such that your local cust customizations, uh, even one single configuration line changes, are uh, in the open. If it's in the open, the capacity builds itself. If it's not in the open, the capacity just with us. Um, and, and so uh, I, I wouldn't say that uh, some government has a capacity, some not. I would say some government have the development norms that leads to capacity. Interesting. Um, okay, I want to switch gears again. I want to talk about, I want to ask one more thing and then I, and then I want to make my other ask because uh, I know we have limited time. That's fine. So, I have 10 uh, more minutes, yeah. Um, it's, it's so interesting for me to hear that you're now shifting more to focus on mm -hmm. services. I always felt like you were this 
really interesting contrast mm -hmm. to kind of the digital service teams that I mm -hmm. often look at because they're very service focused. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel you have been very public consultation and democracy. Oh, yeah, focused. definitely. Yeah. And, and, and did you ever feel, do you feel alone out there doing that work? Do you, do you look at like the other digital service teams around the world and say, I think you're doing, I think you have the wrong emphasis or is it just more like, no, this is the emphasis we had to have. Like, no, not, not, how not, do you look at the others? The above. Um, but for, to answer that, I need coffee. So give me like 30 seconds. <laughs> yes, that's good. I think central central to to the um, to the approach that we're taking is the word we just talked about. It's the fork, right? Forking the government and so on. By making the government forkable uh, and by having GovTech essentially forks of civic tech, uh, what we're doing is just making initial reference implementations that the civil society are still uh, able and much more capable nowadays compared to five years ago to fork. Uh, so the mask availability map forked more than 100 uh, different times is a prime example. So, so when, when you approach it this way, the, the democratic consultation uh, empowerment, the social innovation part, uh, and the service delivery and so on, the open government part, uh, these become the, the same plan. Because this is arbitrary distinction uh, is because uh, previously the service delivery is designed for the people, not necessarily with the people. And some digital service delivery teams uh, do take a participatory design route, um, policy labs and so on, which is arguably with the people. But what we're doing is we're designing after the people which is very different. Like the people already have a inkling of an idea, a prototype, and we discovered them uh, through, well, through me in the Slack channel, but also uh, through presidential hackathon, through many other ways. Uh, and then when these good ideas um, start to sprout, we give them the state resources that's needed to scale it to the entire country, but we do not take control. We may fork it from here and there, but we always contribute back. So the uh, issue uh, become a, a um, like citizen-led, uh, or as I prefer to call it, social sector first uh, approach, where the social sector still has the agency and still has the control. So even if I'm uh, now also working to ensure the talent organization and so on, that principle doesn't change. Uh, not not um, um, so currently we're, we're of course not telling the 100 or so different map um, of the rationing of the ma uh, masks uh, to do anything in particular, but we do control part of the API because the National Health Insurance um, published the API for the mask availability. But when the API reviews data bias, for example, and the OpenStreetMap community uh, spoke through a legislator, uh, the Minister Chen um, now just said of health just said, you know, legislator, teach us. So, so we're open to patches, uh, and if the patches doesn't work, we're also open to forks. Uh, and if you view it this way, then the service delivery is just enhanced consultation capability. Oh, fascinating. Um, but I feel like you, you have all, you've tackled more, I would say, kind of political policy questions than just pure... Mm -hmm service right. delivery as well. I think this also distinguishes your group from yes. other groups. Other groups are very, so on the, you, this was all on the, fo on the service delivery side. And I, so you have this different vision there, but I feel, you know, you've also kind of like, when I think about the, the work, you know, with Uber mm -hmm. going, that's going back a little mm -hmm. bit ways, but you've done more kind of, do you think, do you think this is important for digital service teams to be tackling? Or is this something that's more unique to your role and you don't think is replicable by other groups? Well, I think service um, is in service of uh, whatever that people feels as important. Right? Uh, the original GDS was solving the problem of the um, 
digital teams within each agency were not in power and certainly didn't have budget that leads to a degradation of the service quality. That's the original GDS question. Um, and the austerity measures and so on gave them the political moment. So they also have a political play there. But nowadays, I would say it's not a primary concern now uh, if you ask any random uh, municipal um, public service, uh, like whether you know stuck in active X uh, is still your number one concern. It's probably not their number one concern now, right? Their, their, their concern has, has shifted. Nowadays, they may tell you that polarization and rampant conspiracy theory is their number one concern. Uh, or they may say that they have uh, science to communicate to people, but science is too hot. Uh, that's uh, one of the popular concerns as well that we hear across the globe. Um, and uh, more yet, uh, sometimes they would say, oh, I have this really great idea. I know how to implement it, but the uh, red tapes um, prevented me to procure my own solution, right? <laughs> so, so that's, that's uh, another thing. And it's about uh, not the traditional system integrator uh, startup um, like opposition because that's easily solved by uh, being API first, but rather uh, on how the public sector views itself vis-a-vis -vis, um, the private sector because the, the COVID has shown that if you give governance, give control to the private sector, blockchain included, you're not likely to reclaim it back. Um, but sometime for counter epidemic, you have to do something anyway, um, and and so that capture uh, is uh, fresh in many public servants' mind as well. Uh, and so our solution here uh, is, of course, social sector led. Right, you you give um, special um, treatment to everyone, <laughs> which ceases to be special treatment. <laughs> and so the initial implementers are not your vendors, rather we are their vendors, it's reverse procurement, um, and, and so on. So so I, I would say that all these um, shares the same principle that uh, we work with the public service, we are the public servant of the public service, uh, and whatever the career public service are uh, the most um, <clears throat> difficult to interface with the citizens, that's where we start to build the listening scale um, utility. So it's, in a sense, situational application. Uh, I don't have a roadmap. Whatever emerging issues that uh, uh, threatens to eradicate or decimate, like cut by 10% the trust, uh, the mutual trust, then I, I help you something that help the public service to trust the citizens more. If you could tell, if you could say something to all the heads of the digital public service organizations around the world, what would you want to say to them? What's the advice or what's the mm -hmm. caution? What's the warning? What's the opportunity? What, what would you want to say to them? Mm, well, uh, I'll say um, ring the bells that still can ring. Uh, forget your perfect <laughs> offering. Um, there's a crack, a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. Uh, our internship program is literally called Ray, Rays of Hope, right? uh, Rescue Action by Youth, um, getting the young people to uh, work on whatever digital service they don't like, uh, and then contribute better designs, uh, and then work through the usual design uh, elements <clears throat> within a couple months, uh, and then uh, they get to work with the public service uh, because of the problems uh, in the service, uh, in the uh, digital service. It could be the lack of uh, horizontal integration. It could be a lack of accessibility. It could simply be that uh, people prefer a different mode of interaction compared to the public service and so on. But the Ray uh, program, uh, the, the main uh, call to action is simply that anyone uh, can look at those cracks in everything, and it's everyone's business, uh, and we need everyone's help. So this is Ray of 2020, and this is Ray of this year, which has uh, started this call to um, participation, and it's been quite uh, popular with people in service design, and so on, usually graduate level students. Some of them even become full-time staff Gosh. members. Yeah. Um, so uh, this call is being recorded, yeah, right? Um, can I use this call as an mm -hmm. uh, opening introductory comments at the digital service uh, I'll just I know publish the hours it don't work for to you. YouTube under Creative Commons Attribution. Uh, so you do whatever with it. Uh, we are very fork, fork friendly. Um, and, uh, you know, Minister, I just say, I think it was 10 years ago that you interviewed me yep. when I happened yep. to be 
uh, now I get a chance to interview you. I feel like I'm winning. I, I got the better interview than you got. So hopefully at some point in the next 10 years, um, I can up my game and we can do it again. Oh, yeah, and definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, really looking forward to it. And by that time, 2030, right, the, the global goals would have been met. So it would be a really good interview. <laughs> I, I hope we can talk again soon. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm so impressed with mm -hmm. what you're doing and uh, would love to talk to you about it more. So. I'll reach out again and see if we can find some time, but I know you're really mm -hmm. busy. Sure. So, um, yeah. Um, so till next time then, live long and prosper. Okay. You too. Take care. Bye.